This week we have two blacks, next week one, and then all of our blacks are finished. This is Maria from Maria's Craft Corner. Thanks for joining us tonight. This week we're going to make the turnstile. And this is a really fun black to make. What you're gonna do is you cut out two 11 inch squares. Okay, and these are already sewn together. These are Linda's. She sewed them together. You're gonna take the two 11 inch squares and you're going to sew a quarter inch down one side and a quarter inch down the other side. Not all the way around, just down so two sides. Right sides together. Right sides together, okay? After you do that, you're going to cut this in half and you've got a picture right there on your page. You're gonna cut it in half diagonally. Just like that. And you're going to end up with two very large triangles together. Okay? And you're going to press to the dark. Like I said, this is not mine, so that's why it's brown instead of the blacks. You're going to press to the dark on both of them. Okay? And after you press to the dark on both of them, You're going to sew them back together and you'll have an hourglass. So now you're gonna sew down the middle, right sides together, and you'll have an hourglass, okay? Cool. So in number three, it tells you to square that hourglass up to 14 inches. And that's what I have right here, okay? So this is my hourglass for mine. I squared it up to 14 inches. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and you're going to try to leave your square in one spot on the table. You really don't want to move your, your hourglass around. And you're going to cut three inches off of each side. So I'm going to cut three inches off of this side. Okay, and I'm going to cut... This is when I wish I had my rotating mat. Yeah. I'm gonna cut three inches off of this side. Let's do it this way. Okay. That's four. Yeah, wait, stop, wait, stop, wait, stop, wait, that's wait. four. Thanks. <laughs> I was just making sure you had it. <laughs> Okay, that was wider. Yeah. Don't cut. Oh. <laughs> There's three that way. Wait till you see what I did. There's three that way. And then there's three this way. Okay. Now you're going to follow your diagram and you're going to turn your middle like this, okay? And you're going to turn your corners like this and like this and like this and like this and you have a totally different block and you're going to sew it back together. I think the last two need yeah. to be turned again. Uh, up. No, the top up. one. The, no, that's right. That's right. 
This is when it was cut. Here. Okay. Yeah. But right this here. is. This well, is her dress You're going to sew that, that back together, oh. and then Sorry. you're going to have your turn right. style block. So now you have a nine patch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh -huh. Okay? Yeah. So you'll just sew it as if it was a nine patch block. Okay? Yep. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool, <laughs> isn't it? And if you like this, our next quilt we're doing, that's how the whole next quilt is. The next quilt that the next quilt class that we're going to have up here in the shop is if the finished block looks something like this. Okay, this is my finished block, and that's how this is done. The same way you are going to make your square. You're going to make your um, you're going to sew all the way around two squares together. You're going to cut them and you're going to turn them and you're going to sew them back together, and that's how the whole quilt will be. So it's really fun to do because it's. It's so simple, you know, it's so simple, but yet it looks yeah. so involved, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So that's what the next quilt that we're going to have up here at the shop will be. So, all right. So you guys got all the directions for this black. And if you need anything else, let me know. Okay. Thanks for joining us, everybody. See you next week. Hi, everybody. We're back at Maria's Craft Corner for our second to last class. This is class nine. Peggy Studnicki has finished the top of her quilt, so we're getting ready to layer it. And we're putting her backing and her batting and her top together, and we're gonna spray them together and pin it so that when she quilts her quilt, it'll all stay together for her. So we have her, ba her backing tape down, we put her batting on top, and this is her quilt top. Beautiful, Peggy. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty colors. I like those. Not pretty. Are you at right at the edge with your fabric down there? Do you want to go up a little bit yeah, more? We can go up. Yeah. I don't want any more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yes, okay. So we got her yeah. top on there, and we're gonna get some spray. Okay, ready? Yep. Which way do you want to go first? Okay. Um, yeah, it's a spray adhesive, but when you wash the quilt, it'll come out of the quilt, but it's going to hold her layers together. So that, um, I got this other can. You know what? I It might stain. I'm not sure. Okay, we could do it sprayed on here, though, because it won't stain yeah. down there. Okay, so we have to be really careful. We're gonna smooth it out as we go so that we don't get any um, bumps in the batting. So now the batting is adhered to the backing, nice and smooth. And then we're gonna put the top of her quilt, we're going to do the same thing. But yeah, when you wa when she washes her quilt, this will just disappear. It's not permanent. It's just a temporary spray. She, uh, what we do is we uh, roll it into a tube. And then we um, put it through our machine that way. I can that's okay yeah. yeah. Yeah, that should be fine. But see now the layers are like stuck together. stuck together. So when she quilts, nothing's gonna move on her. Uh, Plus we'll it. pin it. Yeah, we're gonna put some pins in there too. Okay. Now we'll use this okay. new pin. Yeah, because I hate for it to stain your backing. Um I'll show you when, after we get it done, I'll show you the area she has to quilt in order to make it all stay. I think we should keep our mask even when we're done. If that COVID ever does go away, we should keep our mask and use them when we're spraying. Did 
steel tacky. Yeah, but I don't know if I got over here or good enough. There you go. All right. So again, we're really careful not to set it onto the adhesive until we've got it nice and smooth. Stay nice and smooth for her while she's quilting. Okay, so what Peggy's going to do is called Stitch in the Ditch, and she will have to stitch on all these ditches all the way around. So basically she'll be going around all these squares with her quilting, and she'll do that in straight lines. So she'll go to here, and then here, and then jump up to here, and go to there. You always start in the middle and work your way out. So that if there is any extra fabric it moves its way out and because her blocks are so big she'll have to do some stitching inside each block and so what she'll probably do is like go maybe go around this square um, maybe on the heart she could do a couple lines on the heart go around the heart maybe okay just to get some stitching um, the reason we do that is because we don't want the batting when you wash it You don't want the batting to all pucker up in the middle and cause a big a big ball So by doing some stitching inside each square the batting will stay nice and flat when she washes it And she'll also go around these ditches again. We call this a ditch. She'll go around this ditch All the way around this border and she'll go around the ditch all the way around this border So she'll get that done there's also the option, and some of the girls do, is there's people that will quilt them for you. And they have machines that they'll quilt the quilts for you. So you would just finish the top of your quilt, and then you would give it to them, and they would quilt it on a big, long arm sewing machine. So you've got a couple different options to do that. Okay, so we're going to put some pins in there to hold the borders down. And then I usually have the girls put one pin in each block. And then after they quilt that block, they can take the pin out and that way they know which ones they've quilted and which ones they haven't quilted. So that's the process of quilting, of laying out a quilt and getting it ready to quilt. Um, we got a couple other girls ready to do theirs tonight. Some of them have already layered their quilt. And hopefully by next week, we'll show you some finished quilts. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. So this quilt is Linda Volkman's quilt. And she has already layered her back and her bind and her batting is in there and she's already quilted the top of it. So she's ready to put her binding on next. And that's what she's working on right here at the ironing board. She is making her binding. And the binding will go all the way around the outside and it will cover this raw edge so you don't see the raw edge. So when Linda quilted this, she quilted all of her ditches just like Peggy's going to do. And then she quilted a little bit in the middle 
of each. Like I see she went down and did an X here and she went around her heart and she just did a little bit in each of the squares. So all she has left to do is put her binding on and then her quilt will be finished. So we're getting them done little by little. Everybody's getting them done. Sally's putting her borders on back behind you there. Hold yours up, Sally. She's getting her borders on. So she'll be ready to layer hers pretty soon cool. here. Okay. Oh, Good. It's working. And mm -hmm. Debbie's at the other ironing board. She's pressing her backing fabric, so she'll get hers layered tonight. Um, Kathy is sitting there in the cranberry shirt. She's making her binding. This is how you make your binding. You sew uh, all the strips together in one big long strip. So she's marking it and then she'll sew on the line. And she'll get her binding made. She'll mark it with her pen and then she'll just sew on that line and she'll have one big long strip. Like Linda has right here, one big long strip of binding pressed and ready to go. So it'll go all the way around just like this around the edges of her quilts and it'll just make a finished edge on there. It'll look real nice when she's done. It will look very <laughs> nice when you're done. Nice. Of course it will. Thank you. All right. Yeah, because I don't think, because you didn't put a second border on yours, did you? So we can probably cut a lot of this off yeah, before yeah, we. Totally so let's put your quilt top on top and see how big it is and cut this down to the right size first. Okay. I did iron this the other day, but it could be. Whoops. <laughs> kind of flew out of your arms there. Yeah. So you could cut like right here. Okay. And save that fabric. And actually, if you just give it a little snip, you can just rip it. Should just rip really straight. Okay, and then you can do that on the side too and save that fabric. Just make sure you have like, we usually leave four inches on all four sides of the quilt. give it just a slight tug to kind of make it lay a little bit nicer. We don't distort the fabric. Just give it a little, little tug. Over there, Debbie. Um, we have a 
rip the batting too. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to be really with you. Uh, that's okay. As I do it a third time. That's okay. You got your mask on? Yeah. <laughs> quite a few quilts, haven't you? Yeah, no, no. Okay, just this, nice and smooth. different machine you can use a long arm machine but none of the girls in here have long arms so they're just going to do it on their regular sewing machine so Debbie will actually probably start quilting tonight won't you I hope to. so you can uh, get a view of her um, quilting it on her machine Good. Mm -hmm. 
Do you have thread with you, that cone thread? Pardon me? Do you have, that co do you have the cranberry thread? I do. I yeah. only have one, yeah. one uh, smaller roll of it, so if it... Are you doing, what color are you doing your quilting thread? Like on top? You gonna put cranberry on the bottom? Or are you gonna need to put cranberry on the I top I was gonna too? do both. Oh, okay. What do you think? I mean, you could use, if you're worried about running out, you could use a can on top. Yes, I could. And then did you hear me tell the girls will have to do some stitching in each block? Yeah. Okay, because their blocks are too big to leave them all <coughs> unstitched. Really helps when you do this to have two people. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did on Peggy's. We're going to put pins in each block and then pins around the outside. Thank you for helping. Not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you quilt each block, you can take the pin that's in the middle of the block out, and that way you'll know which block you quilted and which one you haven't quilted. Yeah. Trick of the trade. Yep. I learned that by having to search each block and go back and it's like it'd be so much easier just to put a pin in and then take your pin out. Tape away pan and we'll get new tape for yours. Oh, I have done that. I have done that. Good for pans. Um, I do a few more right in front of you, right there. I'm just going to get ready to start quilting this. My intention is to stitch in the ditch uh, all the way around and in some of the squares.
basically you'll go like down one row and then turn the turn your material around and go you know back up the next and after you've done all of the vertical that you can do then like you said you'll re-roll it the other way and then do all the horizontal lines you can do and then after you've done that then you're you're pretty safe to get in there and do some of the more finer the finer work in the squares because your fabric's not going to be moving around running out so soon so So then basically this is just where you would just, um, you know, turn it around and start going back down the other way. Yeah, let's cut some of this off okay. so that we don't have to um, go tape over the edge of the table. Like purple. Isn't that pretty? and we're starting it in September. So that class starts on um, September 14th for that one. These girls will be done by then. 
like a big quilt, but if you don't want to make it that big, they can always make like a throw size. You don't have to make it that big. Well, and it's on the wall the opposite because I don't want it to drag on the floor so the, the uh, length is going um, horizontal. Yeah, that'll be our next quilt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always have to ask the girls, what day? Yeah, September 14th we're having a meeting and we'll talk about the quilt and we'll talk about the supply list and the calendar and all that. Do you want to move it up so you have all your fabric in one spot or no? Tell the girls they have to do some stitching in each yeah, yeah. square. Yeah, all right, looks bad. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Have all your stuff to do your to layer it tonight or no? Oh, okay. So I've got the binding sewn on the back of my quilt mm -hmm. all the way around. And now I'm going to finish the edge by turning it over and just sewing it down and then I'll be done when I get all the way around it. You wanna get you, might, you want to make sure that it covers all of that and the stitching that's there. And I used brown thread so it's not easy to see, which is fine. And you just sew right along the edge. I'm using this as a guideline to, of where I'm keeping that straight. And every once in a while you have these random threads that need to be thrown away. And so it'll look like this all the way around and that'll be done. <laughs> this? <laughs> okay, ta-da! It'll be done! <laughs> That's funny. Okay. I, I'm really happy yeah. that Madeline loves it, but she told me she's going to wait until I die before she takes it. Aww. Well, that was nice of you to let you know. I was like, well, thank you. I'm not giving yeah, to you right now like anyway. Yeah, this is really nice, yeah. Dan. And, and I love no, how you did it. And I agree. With but the, the thing is, I wanted to use this one because I also yeah. have a uh, Well, see, a I was in here the so week that she it. said you could make this white. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm happy with the border. Yeah, I like I the border. I really like it. I had it cut two inches. Oh, who? 
I ended up two inches all oh, the way around because morning. I didn't have enough. It? Yeah. I mean, the I on my spare bedroom, and unfortunately, when I got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, both the cats were in there. So, look at the back as a quilt oh, in itself. That's a quilt in itself. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Uh, I'm, just, I'm very pleased with it. Well, really you am. should be. I know. Yeah, I mean, you it's worth the be. money when you start with I am so excited for Diane Engler. She finished our sampler quilt and she made extra blocks of it so that it would be big enough for a full size bed. And it is just absolutely gorgeous. Diane paid someone to quilt it for her. But she made all the blocks and she did a great job on it. Super Diane. I just absolutely love this quilt. Great teacher. Love this quilt. Beautiful. Go Bears. Beautiful. There. That's pretty. Oh, I love that. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Don't mind the lint all over it. That was for the boy. I was using my fix that corner down there. Gloves. She's got the dark and then the light. Okay. Is that just apple? This yes. is. This was so ready? easy. <laughs> this is Peggy Sudnicki's quilt. It was so easy. She did the cranberries. Absolutely gorgeous. Peggy's still working on the um, quilting of her quilt. But if you look on the back of hers, she did it in a cranberry thread. So you can see the design on the back also absolutely beautiful look at that so yeah peggy is quilting it herself and she's still working on that and then she'll cut off her ends and put her binding on but it turned out beautiful oh here you stand here when you take the picture yeah. see now i like the band of picture it's really pretty you don't have to smile. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Smiling. Are we done? No. Yep. Beautiful, Peggy. Awesome. Well, this one's Pam's. I can show you mine while we're waiting for Pam. Well, Oops, sorry. sorry. Yeah, those have been in the night. Started on one for me that doesn't have a pattern. <laughs> How do you do one that does not have a pattern? I took a picture of. This is yours. This one's mine. Oh, I'm figuring out a pattern. They all look so different, don't really they? Pretty. They do. So pretty. They do. Oh, this is my um, second sampler quilt with my blacks and pinks. And I think it turned out really good. It was a little out of my comfort zone with the colors, but I think they all blended together well. Yeah, I added the cornerstones in there on this one. And a bow, but we won't say why. <laughs> All right. Did we have an oops? Yeah, big oops. The teacher made a big oops. She's probably not going to come back. Oh, this was one that I was. I'll just I was talk about her. This one. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> this is Pam. And that one's just a little. Pam Ball Scraps quilt. She did the plum. And that's all gorgeous quilt. She quilted it herself. So and she used a yeah. um, blended color on the back. So she's got tan on so that tan one. on the back. Beautiful quilt. Um, quilt Again, this is Pam Ball Scraps. That's all? That's it. Yeah. Whoa. Some of the other girls couldn't be here tonight, um, so we don't have pictures of their quilts. But we really appreciate Greg joining us this, during this nine-week class. We've enjoyed having him here. He's a lot of fun. And we appreciate everyone watching us. And hopefully we'll see you at the Craft Corner real soon to take a class.